Hey mateys. Welcome to the Gaming Galleon. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, my name is Captain Rez, and uh, we are going off on another adventure today, but I, I, um, I hope you're all enjoying yourselves today. It's Memorial Day. Um, it's a day when we're supposed to be remembering those who fell in combat for our freedom. And um, for me, you know, I have to be honest, this is a day that uh, it's... You know, I guess I'm a peace baby. Um, I've never been to war. I've never been in combat. The uh, closest thing to, a, you know, an organization I've ever been in is the Boy Scouts. So, um, for me, overtime is, or uh, Memorial Day is usually a good opportunity to get some overtime. Uh, I usually work on Memorial Day. And I, I asked around when I was preparing for this show what people w remembered about the combat in our past and, and uh, I was uh, you know it's just I, I feel like it's just so far beyond what we know these days um, especially people my age millennials even um, baby boomers we don't really you know remember much or know much about what happened in World War One and World War Two. I was watching a video just a couple weeks ago, and they were interviewing people in Times Square and asking, "What is World War Two?" And they didn't even know what that was. They were asking, uh, "Who are the Axis? Who are the Allies?" Nobody had any idea. Uh, it shocked me, and I'm, you know, I'm no historian. I really am not. Um, like I said, I, I don't know much about war, and uh, I asked my father about my grandfather, who was in World War II, and I asked, "What do you know? What grand, you know, what he did, what Grandpa did in the war, or where he was?" And my grand, or my dad, didn't even really know. Uh, he was like, "Well, I don't think he ever went overseas. I think he was in Hawaii, but that's about all I know." He's like, I'll ask, you know, I'll ask my older brother, maybe he'll know, but it's crazy to me. And my father was in Vietnam. I mean, he wasn't overseas either. He was a mechanic in Vietnam, but even someone who was in the armed forces doesn't really even know about the generation beforehand. So it's, this is an interesting holiday because it's one that could easily just go over the radar for, for those of us who are just stuck in our our routines of going to work every day or taking care of their families every day. Um, it's very easy to just let this one go over the radar. And I myself have been very guilty of that in the past. Um, now, lucky for me, I have a pirate ship. So I'm able to bring us to places that, that may help us remember a little more. And that's what today's voyage is going to be about. Uh, it's a Memorial Day voyage. And we're heading out to Normandy to take part in the Battle of Normandy in a game called Medal of Honor Frontline. Now, Medal of Honor is an extremely popular series even today. And I remember this game coming out for the PlayStation 2 10, 13 years back. And I remember this being a very memorable game for, for anyone who was playing at that time because it very accurately portrays what it's like to be storming the beaches of Normandy. And the nice thing about it was you didn't have to buy this game to really experience it because the, there was a demo disc that they had released for the PlayStation 2 that had that very level on it, the beaches of Normandy. And I remember when it came out, myself included, everyone being very wowed by this experience. And the fact that it was on a demo disc, pretty much anyone who was playing tried it and was talking about it. And it's crazy to me to think that this game is really the most I know about one of the most pivotal battles in history. 
uh, if you didn't know, you know, the Western Allied Forces, who were basically America and the UK, I don't think Russia was involved with, with D-Day, but um, at least this, this push. But uh, all of these countries coming together to push their way onto the beaches of France that had already been occupied by the Axis forces. And that's, that's just flat out, I think, the day before D-Day or the night before D-Day, all of these uh, blimps and planes started assaulting the beach. And then they put every bo all, the, all the ground forces into boats and just sent them up on the beach. And they just had to push and claw and gnaw their way through all of the enemy forces and fortifications to get a foothold. And that happened on June 6th, 1944. And to think that most of us don't even know where Normandy is. It's got to be pretty shocking for, for someone who lived during that time. If any, you know, very few are, are left who remember. So it's like, this is the time to learn a little bit. This is the day. You know, when you have your barbecues today, try <laughs> try to think of one one word that sticks in your head about World War II uh, or Vietnam um, or all those other wars that have happened in the, in the past hundred or so years. I mean, even the colonial wars. But, I mean, for us, I think the past hundred years are really the ones that, that stick with us as Americans. Um... Just look up one word, Normandy, and, and learn what it really is about. Because I think that that's a little bit about what today is. And uh, I hope you do it. So if not, that's what we're here for, okay? We're going to learn about Normandy, France. We're going to storm that beach for the fallen soldiers before us. And we are going to have a little fun, okay? I promise this will not be an hour-long slog, but I think it's important for us to take a few minutes here and realize that a lot of people put a lot on the line and paid a big price for us to be able to play Medal of Honor Frontline for the PlayStation 2 today, okay? So let's get started. Um, we'll play a little bit. We'll storm the beach. And then we'll hit the chest. Got some goodies in here. And um, we'll hit your mailbag too. If you want to leave a comment or a question, please feel free. We'll take it live. Okay? All right. So let's get started. It's uh, Medal of Honor Frontline for the PlayStation 2. Set that harp. Give me that beautiful harp music. Here we go. Over here! Get over here! You've got a hell of 
a mess here. That artillery strike scattered what's left of our squad all over the beach. Four of our boys over there. Pop the move on the beach to the seawall. I'll give you some cavalry fire. Now move out! There's the last one. Go, dude! Minefield. Use it against those nests up there. We'll cover you. Covering fire. Oh. Ah. 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 I, how am I supposed to know where they are? Oh my God. I'm really hurt. Uh. Oh my god. 
getting torn to pieces. Got one. Ah! Here come our troops. See them on the beach? Oh my god, they're getting torn to pieces. That's it for now. Uh, I look. I understand that I haven't been talking much. Um, you know, uh, this is a damn show, Raz. Look, I understand. I'm sorry. Uh, I think the I think the game speaks for itself, though. You know, that's. Uh, I mean, that that's not what it was like. It's the closest that we'll ever experience. Me. Um. But you gotta love, uh, you gotta love the sailing up to the beach. I mean, there's guys like, you know, giving the Our Father, Crucifix, some guy, one guy loses his lunch. Uh, it's quite a dramatic uh, scenario right there. Uh, from here, we'll push into the bunker itself and try and uh, get all the way up to the top so we can mark the bunkers via like smokescreen and that will signal our naval forces as to where to attack um so they can blow those those bunkers up we'll get to that later though for now let's uh let's see what we got in the old chest here nothing too crazy in here uh one deal is eh, I'm not even sure it's that much of a deal uh there's one thing in there i'm particularly proud of grabbing though and then uh, we also have um, one really, well, it's a mystery. It's a mystery to even me. So we'll take a look at that. Okay, let's get started. Walked into a pawn shop the other day. Uh, you know, it's just, let's take a look. Actually, it's been a couple weeks since I've looked in this bag. So I'm not sure what's, there's one thing I know that's, a, that's cool in here. I think there's some PlayStation 1 games in here, PlayStation 2 games in here for buck each. And then some more modern Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 for two bucks each. Let's take a look. So out of the box is a game we already have. Uh, I basically grabbed this because I, I'm going to give it to the local arcade. I want to give them a, a kind of a set. Um, this is called Starsky and Hutch. And uh, this is based off the TV show. I think this came out around the same time the movie came out with Ben Stiller and Snoop Dogg. I've never played this. And critically, it got really bad reviews, so it might suck. But here's the thing about this game. It's the one game that I know of that incorporates, for console, that incorporates both a steering wheel, if you happen to have one of those, and a light gun. So you got one guy in the, the driver's seat driving. You got another guy in the passenger seat shooting. Think about that. That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, you know, if you were around in the arcade in the 90s, you might remember Lucky and Wild. They actually had something similar to this in the arcades. Uh, but since then, and that's a really hard machine to find. You know, I mean, obviously, it's 2016. You're not going to see that at the local 7-Eleven. So this is really, you know, if you want to get that experience of your buddies driving and you're shooting, this is really the only way to do it for a reasonable price. So I've got a wheel, I've got a light gun, and we've got Star Skiing Hutch now. Uh, you know, you want a little space to do this, so I thought the arcade would be the right place to do that, so I'll probably just give this to them. And this is in, this is in no way a good deal. A dollar for this is probably a bad, <laughs> it's that cheap. It's that easy to find. So, what have we got next? Spy Hunter 2. You got Spy Hunter 2 here. Uh, I don't know, it looks a little beat up. Spy Hunter 1 was really awesome for the PlayStation 2. Uh, the sequel, we just didn't have it. A dollar, I picked it up. All right, let's see here. This, this, is, how, this is how low, this is how far down the barrel we're, we're scraping 
for games, PlayStation 2 games we don't have in the hold. I don't know. Uh, if we didn't have the pirate ship, if we weren't sending this out to the, the seven seas, I probably would have never picked this up. But who knows, you know, who's, uh, yeah, maybe it'll be Exhibit's birthday and we'll want to play this. I don't know. What is it about? It says uh, you can rip through the city. Turn hoopties into head turners. Is this game? I mean, do you do you get to drive around? I don't know. It's a mystery. Hey, look, it's a mystery. Maybe we need to play it sometime. Pimp my ride. MTV's Pimp My Ride. That was a TV show, by the way. If you didn't know, MTV's Pimp My Ride. It was like this rapper named Exhibit would take somebody's really bad car and give it a makeover. All right. There you go. Very exciting. Uh, Red Faction 2, I hear nothing but good things about the Red Faction series, and I haven't played it. I hear the big sell here is it's first-person shooter that's quite competent, uh, but there's collateral damage. You can, you can blow through a wall with a rocket launcher and go right on through it. That does sound like fun. It's always fun to be able to use your environment against the enemy. So, I don't know. Haven't tried it. Another one for a dollar. Uh, it may as well be a dollar. I don't know. I don't know anything about it, but I really like the box art here. Hurdy gurdy. You've got kind of a, a bigger fish kind of thing. A big fish kind of chain going on here. Uh, I mean, I couldn't even guess what this is about. It looks like kind of a puzzle game. Really, kind of reminds me of uh, Heart of Darkness for the PlayStation One, maybe in 3D. It's got that kind of graphics, though. For a buck, uh, I've seen it a couple times, not often, and it's really, really doesn't hold its value in any way. But for a dollar, it looks interesting enough for me to go for it. Uh, probably of all the PlayStation 2 games here, I'm, I was the most excited about getting this for a buck, which isn't saying much. Uh, okay, now this is fascinating. I was looking at a DVD section of all places, and the spine of this one caught my eye and it says classic game room now if you watch stuff like this crap on youtube you would have to know what classic game room is it's the first video game program that was made for the internet it was just a couple of college guys out of pennsylvania who had like 50 bucks a show to make a video game show and they would talk about old video games and they were pretty funny guys uh, you know, what it's, it's been 20 years later and the show is still in production. It's been, it's taken its share of hiatuses. Uh, it's ter certainly changed and morphed into different ways, but it's an excellent show. I still watch it to this day. If I'm ever looking for a game, if I'm ever out there and I find a game that I don't really know about, classic game rooms, usually the person that, the, the, uh, the video, like, uh, the people that I go to. To learn about it so can't suggest classic game room uh enough on youtube check them out great people but this is interesting in that this is a sealed copy sealed copy of the very first dvd they put out now this thing is really old this thing is almost 10 years old and this was they, they ran into problems about a year ago, uh, last year, where Classic Game Room was almost thinking about shutting down. Now, thank God for Patreon. They were able to, they had a big enough of an audience to be supported via Patreon. But prior to that, they sold off all the backlog merchandise that they had. They really pared down. They used to have, like, T-shirts and mugs and what have you, and DVDs. And all of that got sold in this, because they thought they were going to shut down. So to find this, which was the first DVD they ever had, they ever made, that's at least ten years old, sealed. Like you can't even find this on the internet. A sealed copy of this, I don't even know if they exist anymore. And it, I really want to watch this. I mean, here it gives you an idea of what they're like. You've got a, and only available in the UK. Atari 7800 joypad 
you know, clinking up against a big mug of beer. That's that's classic game room all day. Okay. Uh, so to find this DVD in a pawn shop in Indianapolis, sealed. This is the kind of thing that you would have to mail order. I mean, do I have to explain how how re how re reclusive this is if it's based on a, a web series show? It's fascinating to me that this was sitting there. Even it'd be strange enough that it was there on its own, but the fact that it's sealed is very strange to me. And I, I really want to open it up and enjoy it. I think that that's what it's meant to be. But my God, after everything being sold just about six months ago that they ever made for this series this has got to be a serious collector's item among the you know 500,000 people that watch classic game room so fascinating stuff for a buck i was like wow crazy am i the only one that's been impressed by that i don't know uh walt disney book walt disney's the jungle book rhythm and groove we do not time uh, 22. All right, where are we? Uh, Rhythm and Groove. I, I guess this is a, a DDR game. Dance Dance Revolution game. You probably play this with the pad. You know, whatever. I grabbed it. Uh, okay, so here's a couple of pretty decent $2 games. You got Ratchet and Clank, uh, Tools of Destruction. Man, I lo absolutely love this movie, this uh, series. The movie just recently came out and apparently got completely lambasted. Um, that's crazy to me. I know, I know Ratchet and Clank aren't really that uh, relevant these days, but I can't imagine a, a game a, a game based around you know a, a couple of wisecracking aliens with a bunch of like over the top weapons. I can't imagine that being a bad movie sounds awesome to me godfather 2 godfather 2 for the playstation 2 never played the first one and played the second one uh here they're pretty good games but man there's just too many crime games out there i don't i really haven't gotten into a crime game in a while there's got to be one of, i haven't played gta in a long time darksiders 2 limited edition I hear this is a great game. This is kind of like God of War meets Zelda. And I hear this one's just like immense. So I've been waiting to find a good copy of that for the right price. Got that guy. What's this? Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 3. Fighting game, I guess. Sure. Okay. Fighting game? Uh. And then finally, <laughs> a game I picked up because I've never seen it. I never see this one, so I don't know what to expect. Uh, Nat Geo Challenge Wildlife. And, you know, it kind of bothers me. Uh, it's not National Geographic Wildlife. It's Nat Geo. Nat Geo Challenge. I hate the dumbing down of, you know, everything's got to be abbreviated these days. That really bothers me. National Geographic sounds so elegant. Um, you know, it sounds like you're going to learn something, you're going to go somewhere and experience something. Uh, Nat Geo just uh, it totally turns me off. All right, so all together there, you've got two, four, six, eight, ten on the PlayStation 3 games. You've got uh, one dollar for. For the awesome uh, classic game room DVD, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So eighteen bucks out the door. Eighteen bucks out the door. Uh, it's okay. It's all right. This I'm really excited about though. Check this out. I walked into another joint a few days ago, and sitting on the shelf. It's so interesting when a pawn shop changes hands, because this was a store that they were penny pinching for like over a year. There was some savvy guy in there who thought he knew uh, about video games. And he would just rake you over the coals. He would do the, the dirtiest stuff. Nothing would ever come out on the floor. Nothing. For like six months. Over six months. Over a year. 
nothing would come out. And every time I would walk in there, I'd be like, hey, you got any video games coming out today? And they'd be like, oh, yeah, all the, all the they're all there already. They're all out there already. Now, I knew that nothing new was out there. So I finally confronted the manager. The manager's like, oh, we just got this reseller who comes in. He comes in the back. He buys whatever he wants. Buy, you know, he'll buy like $1,000 worth of stuff. So this guy just sits on it for him. That so bothers me. That some guy's getting preferential treatment, going in the back. You know, I know I get taken care of a little bit here. I get it. But I just feel, you know, I never tell anyone to just hold something for me. If I don't get it, that's just the adventure. Okay? This guy's got some sort of backdoor deal going on. It really bothered me. So now that manager's either gone or he's quit or been fired or moved on from the company... And now it's like all of a sudden everything's $2 again. So I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, but I didn't see anything great there. But what I did find was on the floor they had a rack full of like really bad games, like sports games and rhythm games, wrapped up in aluminum in a, a, a thing of five. Okay? Like PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2. But then I saw this one that says... PlayStation 1 games. Okay? So this was five... Five for five. So buck each on these games. And obviously it's sealed, so you have no idea what they are. But... I could tell... Because I know what these discs look like. Through the plastic. Through the casing. If you can see, there's some like little light areas here. That'll actually let you see there's holes in the casing. And I can actually see what this one disc is. And it's Spyro the Dragon. Okay? Spyro the Dragon's going to pay for way more than whatever's in here. So I thought it was worth picking up. We've already... It's already a safe bet. I don't know what these other four games are. So let's open them up. Let's check it out. Alright? Hopefully I don't cut myself with this razor here. All right, here we go. All right, so the first one here. Put down the, put down the Sharpie here. Oh, one more cut. Sorry. At least I had the... the at least I thought I had enough to, to find something to cut this with, right? Okay, so here we go. So we're open now. So the first one, as I said... Boom, we have uh, Spyro the Dragon. Believe it or not, Spyro is still in demand, even in disc for, for mirror. Uh, we should be able to get somewhere around 10 or $15 for this guy. Oh, it's really busted. Oh, no. It's over. See that? See the crack? Hold on, I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're skunked. Nobody can fix that. Dang it, dude. Dang it. And I'm willing to bet these other ones are just like sports games. There's probably not going to be anything great. Okay, number two. Here we go. We have... What is it? Space Jam? Space Jam for the PlayStation 1. Okay. Sure. Uh, we don't have it. So I suppose that's good. Is it broken? Space Jam was uh, that Michael Jackson movie where Michael Jordan movie where he and Bugs Bunny team up to make an intergalactic basketball team. I don't know. Looks like it's in terrible shape. <laughs> Look, I knew this wasn't going to be the best investment, but it was a mystery. You know, it's hard to hard to say no to a mystery. All right, another one. Can't see in it. Ah, oh, of course. Tony Hawk Pro Skater Two. We have it. Uh, okay. I always like these. PlayStation uh, Demo Disc. PlayStation Jam Pack. Now he's a sucker for these guys, and it looks totally wrecked. They, they, they sure got my $5. And then finally, of course, Triple Play. 98. What a pooper. What a pooper. Oh, this, of course the Spyro... Had to be. 
That's how they get you. That's how they get you. $5 on that stinker. What do we end up with? $5 for space, for space Jam. $5 for Space Jam. And we'll probably have to get it repaired. So that was terrible. That was a terrible deal. Oh, well. Uh, you know, what I can you say? Um, it's been nice out. I really haven't been sailing out there uh, doing deals much these days. I guess I'm getting getting a little lazy. Uh, that's what we got. What do we have? We had 18 on the first deal, 5 on the other. So 23 bucks. What are you going to do? I was. I really had a good time opening those. Kind of like opening an Avid calendar. Okay, we should uh, get going. We're running out of time here. Uh, we, we're going to play. Uh, we're going to try and... Uh, We'll play one more mission in Medal of Honor Frontline, and then we'll uh, we'll hit the mailbag. Okay, so let's get started. Here we go. It's uh, Medal of Honor Frontline for the PlayStation 2. Boys. Are you kidding me? I'm sloppy. Watch, see that? He tried to get back up. No mercy. Communications. <laughs> you gotta love the scripting of the the, the enemies here. I got him. on this thing. Oh, man. Ah! Hold it. Hold it. Whoa, he's going for it. 
Oh my god. Wow, how did I get him there? Huh. There's another one. That didn't work. He's hopping. <laughs> this. More machine gun bullets. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ugh. You gotta love how every one of these characters just has a personality of their own, you know? That's the bu that's the bunker. I can hear it. It's too loud for them to hear me. Oh my god. The other bunker. Okay, all right, all right. He's dropping the he's dropping the the smoke. So that's marked. And now the air forces know they can bomb that area. Woo! All right, it's our turn. We got to lay smoke and get the heck out of here. Go!
Oh. I did it. Excellent work, Patterson. This mission was tough, but you've proven yourself to be exceptional. The vision's moving on to Beerville. We're replacing you on a special mission. Good luck, Patterson. So that's it. Mission accomplished. Whole lot easier for us, huh? A lot easier for us than the Allied Forces, to be sure. Let's see if we got a message, a question over here. Uh, I do have a mailbag question. Hi, how are you? This is a live person. This is uh, Scrot Dyer. Hi, Scrot. Thanks for stopping in. He says, uh, "Holy crap, this game is awesome." What are you playing? What am I playing this on? Uh, we were playing this. This is a PlayStation 2 game. I think I put it away with the booty. Again, that was uh, Medal of Honor Frontline for the PlayStation 2. Um, it's Memorial Day. There's a reason that we get to just have barbecues today and hang around or get, you know, double time because it's a national holiday. It's for all the guys that actually lived that. We're in these uh, uh, these bunkers, and um, sorry that the sound is going crazy over here. I guess there's a cutscene going on or something. Uh, that we're in these bunkers, we're in these little boats, and just had to go up to the beach in, in this foreign country, this foreign land. I mean, that's so alien to me. Think about it. You you probably get a little xenophobic going into the next state. So I don't know. It's uh, definitely an excellent game. Frontline, Medal of Honor Frontline. You know, I'm sure you've heard of Medal of Honor before, but this was before they they made the multiplayer. This isn't even a multiplayer game. Imagine that. Medal of Honor being a one-player game. How how did they sell this for retail price? Well, they did, my friends, because it's it's got a lot of personality, and you really learn a lot. Um, I suggest it. And the, this, this game couldn't be cheaper. It was very popular back then. Uh, I want to thank... Uh, uh, he's, he says I have a feeling it was Frontline. It is Frontline. Uh, I want to thank um, Scott Dreyer for the question. I want to tell you if you'd like to leave a question, you can leave it at GamingGallion at gmail.com. We'll drop it in the old mailbag, the bag that tells no tales. Or you can get on the ship live with us and leave one right here uh, that's it for today I think I have a feeling we're, we're a little uh, light today but that's okay um, I just want to once again thank the armed forces uh, those who have fallen I want to um, I want to urge you to try and remember them and I want to thank those those armed forces who are out there even today doing more than just sitting on a pirate ship playing video games like us they're out there defending guys like us so thanks again um and thanks to you for uh sailing with me today we'll have another adventure soon who knows where in the world or the known galaxy the gal the galleon will go to next but i assure you whatever trouble we get into we're gonna do it together all right so we'll see you next time Happy Memorial Day. And until the next time. Farewell and adieu. Take ye Spanish maidens. Farewell and adieu. Ye ladies of Spain. For we received orders. For to sail on to Normandy. And we may never see. Ye fair ladies, Hogan. Oh, that's good. That that song holds a song holds a, an extra amount of weight today. Keep your powder dry, ladies.